Okay, this is my first attempt to post something on YouTube, but I'm attacking a roof issue. I've got a 1972 Terry travel trailer. Let me see if I can turn this thing around. So here's the trailer, and you can see where I've actually started removing the roof, but let me show you what I'm dealing with. Of course, the guy I bought it from told me the roof didn't leak, and I told him immediately that it did. But when you come into the nose, at some point in time, somebody has replaced the roof rafters with two by fours on their sides. But what they never did address was that this roof vent was leaking. So they took the leak, the vent out and replaced it with sheet metal and put screws in it. And then they poured a bunch of tar up there, but it was leaking also where the front nose meets the roof line and then it was also leaking around the middle vent and you can see the damage to the structure it actually has plywood up there now this camper does not have a plywood decking it actually just has sheet metal decking but they put plywood here for the air conditioner so anyhow what what i'm doing let me take you back outside okay i started by removing the gutter or not the gutter the awning trim that goes along the side and all the staples and if you look that's all it took to get this roof to release from the sidewall there's some staples there once they're out uh, and those screws that were holding it were taken off this roof opened wide up so now you can see where I've spent just a few minutes separating that's a ton of tar right there but separating the tar and then removing the screws and staples where the front nose, and you see the front nose rolls over, and then the roof actually tucks under about four inches underneath the front nose. So I've separated that. My intent today, well, first of all, there's their patch with a ton of tar, and with those, uh, these roof trusses are higher in the middle than they are the edge, and so when they laid two by fours on their side, uh, all that did was create a valley right there with that pan is at so it just kept leaking and then they've tarred around that second vent and it's leaking so anyhow um, they uh, I'm going to take all this side part loose back past that vent that's leaking and my attempt this afternoon is going to be to roll this roof back I've got some of those concrete cardboard forms uh, to use to kind of keep it from creasing on me I hope and my intent is just to roll it back and then I'm going to replace that sheet metal right there. Uh, replace the trusses, which is why I'm rolling it back so I can put the trusses back in. And replace this damaged section right here. You can see where the wood is rotted. Hope you can see it's kind of dark. But I will, uh, I'll update you on my progress. But that's the intent is just to gently roll this roof back. There are no holes in the roof. Everything was leaking around the vents and evidently around this front uh, seam, which could have been easily addressed years ago with just some um, some of that great white tape that's about five or six inches wide. All right, more to okay, come. Okay, I've opened up the roof, and here's what we look like. Obviously, that's the front cap. You can see the interior wall right there. This actually is a loft bed or one of those fold-down beds that's above the couches. You can see I've got some damage. Zoom in, you got some damage right there above that window. Hopefully that's an easy repair. You can see the, the wood rot that's right here. I'm gonna take that out. The trusses don't sit on that. They sit actually inside that. Um, here is one of the trusses right here, the original one. So I'll be coming in. I am going back in with two by fours instead of the one by width that they had. And I have decided not to go all the way back. I'm going to scab the rafters back there since all I'm going to have is a vent. And up here, I've got to be beefier. I'm going to put an air conditioner unit up here. So I'm going to be beefier. But there's my cardboard rolls. I attached a two by with some clamps to that sheet metal. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it goes all the way across, but it's basically so that I could, from one side of this camper, because I can't really walk on it, could pull everything over at one time. It did kind of tear where the, you can, 
zoom back out a little bit. You can see right here where it kind of tore where the sheet metal was folded over the edge, but that shouldn't be an issue for me, I hope. Uh, once I get the butyl tape back on there and get the outside weather strip on. But there's my progress so far, and I've basically got two rafters to set in right here. Uh, and one of those is the one that all of this screws down onto once it's folded over. So I'll um, update you more. Well, I thought I'd give you a view from the inside. The new skylight that's in the roof. Isn't it impressive? you got a great view. Uh, anyhow, you can see even more of the damage that's right there. Looks like this side, sorry to move the camera so fast, is damaged all the way back to here. So I am going to have to cut out all the way back to there and replace that, that upper, I don't know if that's called a seal or plate or whatever it is, replace that. But luckily, if you can tell, my interior wall is good and actually so is the board that's behind there. Uh, so I, I don't have any issues with that. I, um, I just got to get these rafters back in and roll that roof back down. Okay, I've got my roof back down. Still need to go back in and tape, staple those sides. You can see where the roof top is still overlapping. And I'll show you what it looks like on the inside now that I've redone that rafter section. Let's get us some light in here, but uh, these basically were not set at 14 inches apart for an air conditioning opening. They, whoever put this in just did the best they could patch it, plus the two before which is sitting on top of this cabinet and not going all the way to the exterior walls. So I've completely replaced that. This is still that original two before laid on side, but I, I beefed it up with another joist. So all of that is posed to put an air conditioner right here. This is one of the original rafters and it's still good. So we're using it. Here's the other ones. And this is, this last one actually doesn't have the pitch the other ones have a, a pitch that goes up and down. Uh, and you can see my markings right there, like where it's two and three eighths right there, and two and a half and three feet and stays there and goes back down. But um, I guess it doesn't have that pitch because that's where the seam of the front nose coming over meets with the, the roof on top. So I'm fixing to go up on top and, well actually I'm gonna start down the sides and staple the side back down to make sure I've walked it all the way as tall as I can back to the front. And then I'll, I'll reconnect that seam where the front nose covers the roof. Okay, I've got the roof sides stapled back down where I've shot staples back in. That's the way it was originally installed. And then that molding that goes down the side screws through the roof uh, into that top plate. Still see some waviness that I was hoping I wouldn't see. I was hoping that would be a little more arched right around that vent and I might could pad that somehow or another. This one doesn't seem to be very arched and obviously I don't want it to hold rain water. I want it to be able to flow off one side or the other. So I may uh, still go in and shim somewhere between the sheet metal and the rafter to lift that up a little more. It's gonna be, I gotta make sure around that air conditioner vent, which is what that's gonna be, that I've got structurally enough to support that. So it can't just be anything, but um, but then I've still got this last strip to put down. I've got to go basically get some screws to put that down and put the trim back on. And then uh, I'll uh, put some of that uh, Turnabond, I think it's the brand name, tape across there. I may put two strips so I get about uh, 10 inches of coverage across there. And hopefully that stops all of that. I had to replace this so I'll get all this caulked well. And um, I can't wait to power wash this roof and see what it looks like without all these years of dust on it from sitting in a barn. Okay, I'm about ready to staple down the front nose, but I've been cleaning on the surface. You can see down there where the old butyl tape is still on. I've just taken a, a steel wire brush on my drill, and I'm going down through here, just uh, getting it as clean as I can so the butyl tape will stick. Uh, I've also had to scrape the underside of this as best I can, but I can't really clean that with a steel brush because it just bends too much on me. Uh, I did have a tear. I'm not happy about that. Hopefully I can cover that with a uh, the Turnabond tape and keep that from leaking on me. I've got to make sure it doesn't leak. Um, but anyhow, I'm going to clean up and then I'm going to, this will get stapled down uh, first 
and then I'll come back in with some screws and I'll show you the screws I'm going to use in a little bit. The front nose cap curled back around and screwed down. You can see how many screws I've put in there. And that white that you're seeing is the butyl tape uh, oozing back out. There's a pretty good view of it right there. I did use this screw. I used it a few weeks ago for the first time. I, I do like it. It's, if you notice though, this is a metal to wood versions because I've got wood I'm screwing to underneath. Uh, I'm using a one inch and then I'm screwing them down so I can see that rubber washer right there slightly compressed, which should seal that. Now I'm going to seal all of this with a tape that's probably somewhere in this range as width wise and I'm coming all the way across that. I do want to clean it up a little bit now that I've got it screwed down uh, but I'm going to seal it with this really heavy duty um, Eterna Bond, I think that's what the name of it is, uh, tape. You can see that my bit has popped up from that tar where that tar released which just shows you it just doesn't have the holding power of a good product to keep your vents sealed. Um, I do feel like I still need to crest those and I haven't addressed that so I'm going to be working on the inside but I'll, uh, I'll get back to you when I get ready to put the tape down. Here's the tape I've been talking about. It's, it is doughy really on the underside of it. Really good adhesion. You'll be able to see the, the screw heads at the top. But I'm going to run two rows. I've decided I'm going to run here and then I'm going to overlap one just in front of it to give me extra coverage. And um, I really, I'm hoping I can get it to stick well. This, this stuff is just, uh, anyhow, the roof, you can see all the garbage that's there that I just can't get off. So I'll give you an image when I'm done. Okay, there's my finished product for now. I'm going to paint this front nose. So I'm going to wait and put the second run after I paint the front nose. First of all, it just keeps me from having to cut in around the tape. And I can just use the tape to overlap the paint. I can tell you right now, guys, if you don't have a white roof, your, your RV is too hot. Because I this right here is hot. But this is egg frying hot. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to be painting this roof white just as soon as I get it cleaned off. Um, I've got to figure out how I'm going to clean it off if I have to put the air conditioner back on first so I can have that hole sealed. But then it's going to be white because this, this thing is cooking right now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please uh, feel free to leave me a comment or reach out.